Welcome to the Dalton Highway, the northernmost connected road in the Americas. Forging deep into the Arctic Circle, the Dalton connects Alaska's northern city of Fairbanks with the remote community of Dead Horse, which services the vast oil fields at Prudhoe Bay on the Arctic Ocean. Existing only to access the oil fields and to parallel the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, the Dalton is one of the most remote and isolated roads in North America. 800 kilometers, 500 miles, from Fairbanks to Dead Horse, with only two small service stops along the way. In this episode, we cycle the entire route, though things definitely do not go according to plan. This is Bikepacking Alaska, episode four. The whole road to the Arctic. So it's the morning of the big day. We're going to be setting out in a few minutes. It's 800 kilometers to Dead Horse. Yeah. We have food for probably eight or nine days. Or so, 10. or 10, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Probably overdone the food a bit. But yeah, super excited to hit the road. Yeah. You yeah. can't wait. <laughs> we had been looking forward to the Dalton Highway since well before we first touched down in Alaska. We weren't totally sure what food would be available along the way, so to play it safe, we were carrying food for almost 10 days, and the bikes were running super heavy. So the mosquito fest has already begun. We had to stop. Uh, some guys on a motorbike had broken down, so we gave them a hand getting the uh, bike onto a truck. And within 30 seconds of stopping, we were just getting absolutely slaughtered by these guys. Um, it's a little bit better than how we've got DEET on, but on the climbs, they're just on you, especially when there's no wind like at the moment. So we were warned. Apparently it's one of the worst years for mosquitoes in a very long time. So it's not even bad yet compared to how bad it's going to be. So, yep. Be happy with what we have. Be happy with what we have. As you can see, bike throwing is an extremely glamorous business. Here we are in, uh, in a toilet, which is really good little bit of shelter from the rain and mosquitoes, which are both really pretty brutal outside. We're on top of a pass, um, there's a trailhead here, so we've used this little bit of shelter. So, there's a lot of mosquitoes here. Like, I mean, I wonder if you can, I wonder how much of this you can see in the video. But uh, there's, there's a lot of the buggers, there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, so uh, we are in mosquito land and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be this way for the next week and a half. So I guess we better get used to it. This is the dinner technique, running faster than the mosquitoes. <laughs> this is how you eat food in Alaska. And of course, just because the mosquitoes are a bloody nightmare doesn't mean we have to forget about bears. So I've got 10 days worth of food here, which I've then got to tie to a tree. All right, that's just about it. That's all the tasks done. My face is extremely itchy and my neck is very itchy and my most of me is pretty itchy. There's been a lot of bites. Oh, it's been a really good day, despite the mosquitoes. <laughs> Some really beautiful riding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty great day. Hopefully it'll be less rainy tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, fingers crossed it'll be drier. Well, it's morning and uh, these guys are all still here. <laughs> it's pretty difficult to summon the motivation to leave this tent, but got to be done. Hopefully it doesn't rain as much today. We're doing actually double. This is, we're just, just this getting our stepping, step count in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. 
God, it's a huge relief just to get riding, just to get the head net off. I'm gonna get about a kilometer away from where we were camped and then I'm gonna be able to take off my rain gear, get some DEET on my legs. <laughs> but it's looking a lot more beautiful today, a lot brighter. The sun is almost out. It's not raining. Oh, it's gonna be a good day. Day two was by far the worst day of the trip. So this stuff is the only way we're able to bloody survive out here. Deet, horrible, horrible stuff. Really works, the uh, mosquitoes hate it, but it stinks, absolutely horrible stuff. Even works on humans, this stuff. But yeah, without this, life is really miserable. So I uh, made it to the start of the proper Dalston Highway, which is great. Downside is I've now got to wait for Chloe and waiting on this highway involves standing around or walking around getting massacred by these mosquitoes. So uh, yeah, they really, uh, they really make it hard to enjoy this. <laughs> You know, in a way, mosquitoes are actually a really good thing because if you're thinking about slacking, slowing down on the climbs, they love to chase you up the climbs. <laughs> so it's a really good incentive to keep pedaling and to pedal fast. Because if you're going slow, these guys will be on you. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna choose to look at mosquitoes as a blessing. So we just met our first uh, cyclists on the Dalton Highway. Just met two French cyclists who are now turning back. They've decided not to go any further because the bugs are so bad. And uh, yeah, I'll be honest, I'm quite jealous. <laughs> the bugs are absolutely shocking. So I'm quite envious that they're gonna be hitchhiking a lift back to Fairbanks, whereas we're gonna be continuing to bug infested lands. <laughs> but nah, it's all good. It's beautiful here and the sun is shining, more or less. And uh, on the downhills, it's great. It's just the uphills and when you stop. So, uh, well, nothing for it, let's just keep going. How you doing, Chloe? No, I'm good, I'm tired. <sighs> yeah, the climbs are absolutely brutal. Climbs are like, yeah, rolling hills are quite. Well, each, each climb is about 300, 400 meters. They're pretty steep, and the, like, the gravel is quite high resistance. And there's no flat, like, you don't even have, like, enough motion to just move on to the next climb. You just, like, start from scratch again. So we've got up to the top of a climb. We we're really looking forward to a nice long downhill. <laughs> and there's a, a car here. They're doing some work on the road, and we're gonna have to cut our bikes into the pilot car for about 10 miles whole downhill bit and they're gonna drop us off right at the bottom of the next climb <laughs> <laughs> so we've been told that the pilot car that rocked up didn't have space for us so we're gonna have to wait 20 more minutes for the next one and it's raining <laughs> and there are mosquitoes too so ah oh, this day is going well <laughs> How are you doing, Chloe? You having fun? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you look like you're having fun, buddy. Well, all the mozzies are actually going stuck here. They need yeah, because they want shelter as well. Yeah, off. <laughs> so in addition to the weather, the mosquitoes, the climbs and bears, We've just had a conversation with a construction worker who's told us that apparently there have been nine wolves that have been seen in the last three days. So there's a ton of wolves around this area. And apparently a guy on a motorbike was bitten by one that then also turned out to have rabies. Um, so he had to get kind of rushed to hospital and the wolf was, was shot. Um, so apparently there are lots of wolves ahead in this next area. So yeah, that's just uh, one more thing, <laughs> one more thing to worry about. So we didn't end up getting too much further yesterday because the weather was miserable, mosquitoes were brutal and we couldn't really be bothered. So we camped kind of early next to this pipeline, which is pretty cool. 
and today the weather is much better the sun is shining there's a slight breeze so the mosquitoes aren't as bad and yeah ready for a better day so here in alaska we use deet like sun cream horrible stuff and we definitely do not recommend doing this but <laughs> The first two days were by far the worst, but from day three, things immediately started getting better. The weather improved, the mosquitoes weren't quite as traumatic, and as we approached the Yukon, the landscape started to get more interesting. The worst of the climbs were behind us, and with each day, we were also riding lighter as we ate through our heavy food supplies. Reaching the Yukon was a big moment, and it felt amazing to cruise over the bridge and to reach the first service stop since Fairbanks. Action. <laughs> we made it to Yukon River Camp, and we are in a mosquito-free zone, and we are enjoying it that much we don't want to leave. Uh, we got a job in the kitchen, we're going to stay here. <laughs> not, not coming out of here anytime soon. <laughs> See you never. So, tragically, we've been sacked from our jobs in the kitchen very, very quickly. So we're gonna have no choice but to continue cycling north. I think this might be the first flat section of road we've had since leaving Fairbanks. It's actually freezing my brain. All right, so I've just met some more cyclists, a couple of guys from England that have just come down from Dead Horse, and they seem to be having a pretty measurable time of it. <laughs> That's uh, cyclist three and four we've met on this route, and we've got a bit of intel about the route ahead. And uh, yeah, I think we are done for the day. I'm just here with my, my best friends, my little army of mosquitoes. But yeah, it's been a much better day than yesterday. Been a much better day, but still looking forward to getting into my tent getting out of the mosquito cloud. Hey buddy, Back. feeling good? Yeah, that one was a bit much. Yeah, they were pretty aggressive on that one. Yeah, it's definitely a pain in the ass, this whole bear thing. You know, like every night you get to camp <laughs> and you wanna just dive in the tent, eat in the tent and just kind of unwind. But instead you gotta then, you know, walk a few hundred meters, eat, pack up all your food, into a bag like everything with the smell put it into the bag and then take it and hang it up tight to something can't eat in the tent it's definitely a faff this but, like i'm just walking back clothes on his way now taking his food for a little walk <laughs> <laughs> lovely evening for it isn't it sir yeah it's just a nuisance it's a real nuisance and all the while you're being accosted by the friendly neighborhood mosquito oh well look what a beautiful place we're camping in though next to this very glamorous oil pipeline here but look at that sky it's beautiful got a nice little spot for our tents oh living the dream so as you can see it's an absolutely beautiful day and today we're going to be crossing the arctic circle so pretty excited to continue north. So today we have a new challenge, headwind. But I'm definitely not gonna complain because as a result of this headwind, there's no mosquitoes. No mosquitoes at all, so Yay for headwind! All right, so we made it to the Arctic Circle. It's pretty cool and uh, it's very, very hot. And uh, today's been a very tough day. Lots of climbing, headwind, but we won't complain about the headwind because it's meant there have been no mosquitoes. <laughs> So yeah, we're pretty tired, so we're gonna see about maybe finding a place to camp pretty soon. It's 
pretty amazing how much life can change in a couple of days. A few days ago, we were absolutely miserable, getting rained on, getting swamped by mosquitoes, all of the bad things. And now here I am, it's about 10 p.m. The sun is shining gently, beautifully. Nice cool breeze, nothing on the road, beautiful lighting, beautiful scenery and it's just absolutely glorious. Just goes to show when things are really, really bad, just keep going. Sooner or later it's gonna get better. It always does. But yeah, what an amazing moment. What an amazing place it is out here right now. All right, last half day into Coldfoot. We are now riding in the famously frigid Arctic Circle which as you can see is icy, bleak. It's a desolate place. I guess you can't believe everything you hear. <laughs> So we've made it to Coldfoot, which is pretty great. First bit of phone signal we've had in five days and uh, kind of the first proper bit of civilization we've really had since Fairbanks, I guess. Um, yeah, we've had a lovely meal, ate an enormous amount of food and we're now gonna camp here. Slightly challenging to find a place to pitch a tent because the ground is so waterlogged. I don't really wanna camp in a puddle but um, yeah, really happy to be here. And from here on out, it's gonna be much, much easier. Most of the climbing is now done. Yeah, only a few more days to Dead Horse. All right, so we decided to take a day off at Coldfoot as we had loads of food left and uh, we wanted to wait for the road to dry up a little bit as we had a lot of rain. But we're back on the road today and it's about 390 kilometers from here to the end of the road at Dead Horse. And we've been told that this is going to be the most beautiful section of the road. So that's exciting. It's also going to be a lot easier as far as elevation goes. So yeah, excited for this section. The second half of the route from Coldfoot to Dead Horse was where the Dalton Highway really started getting good. Right out of Coldfoot, we were into the Brooks Range the world's highest mountain range that's fully within the Arctic Circle. The views were spectacular, traffic was much lighter north of Coldfoot, the mosquitoes weren't quite as bad, and best of all, despite being in the mountains, the road had finally started to flatten out. We were following the pipeline north into some of Alaska's most incredible landscapes, and we were absolutely stoked to be there. All right, so we made it to the start of Attigan Pass, which is the highest pass on the route, going up to, I think, just under 1,500 meters. It's pretty wet and muddy where we are, so hopefully the road up is not like this and it dries out. All right, so making good progress on this last climb, Attigan Pass. You can just see Chloe down there at the bottom, about to start. So this is the last climb, the last real pass in the Dalton Highway. It should be mostly downhill from the top. Yeah man, that was actually a decent climb. Yeah. It's open? Yeah, surprisingly. How is it? Well, it's abundant. 
It's what? It's abandoned. It's, it's a bit but how is it? It's we're yeah, probably not the first one. <laughs> I mean, it's sheltered from the wind. All I'm right, there, this looks like home then. Yeah. So it's been a pretty great day. We have found this firehouse behind me, which is open. So we're going to sleep in there. The pass was absolutely beautiful. Stunning, stunning place. And from here, it's almost all downhill. So super happy. It's pretty cold up here, but the weather is great right now. Yeah, it's an amazing place. I mean, you might be thinking, Tristan, why is there a firehouse? out here in the middle of the Brooks Range in the Arctic Circle in Alaska with no other houses anywhere near here. I mean, that's what I'm wondering. So if any of you know why there's a firehouse out here in the middle of nowhere, even an abandoned one, or if you have any exciting theories, especially ones that are completely ridiculous, please do let me know in the comments. The long descent down from Attigan Pass was probably my favourite part of the whole Dalton Highway, especially as we were treated to some of the best weather conditions of the whole journey. This was exactly why I'd come to Alaska, to ride endless dirt roads underneath towering mountains deep in the wilderness, going ever further away from civilization. If the first half of the route wasn't always super rewarding, the Brooks Range and the descent from Attigan made it all worth it. This, for me, was what Alaska was all about. Okay, so situation is, Clo had a problem with his tire, his tubeless failed. It was actually a pre-existing puncture that was giving him grief and he sort of managed to bodge fix it in Fairbanks, but it has come back and he wasn't able to get the tubeless to work, so he tried putting a tube in instead, but he wasn't able to do it by himself, so he had to grab a lift down the road where I'd been waiting for a while. So you've broken, broken two tire levers. <laughs> Together we were able to get the tire back on, um, but it's immediately showing signs of puncture, so we've now had to take it off checked the tube in some uh, some nearby ponds and there are a whopping five punctures in his tube so now we've got five punctures to patch and then get the tube back on um, and he doesn't have any other tubes and uh, my spare won't work for him because it's too big so yeah challenges okay so situation is we tried to patch up closed tube uh, it had five punctures. Unfortunately, none of his patches are sticking and my patches and my spare tube won't work, uh, won't work with his setup. So we just decided that he was gonna have to hitchhike the rest of the way to Dead Horse and I was gonna cycle there. And uh, we've just tried to hitch a lift for him. And the first car that stopped um, is a really nice guy, Arnold, who's uh, coming up from Puerto Rico. And um, Arnold has a spare tube which he's going to give us Yo. so he's just trying to find it right now um but yeah it looks like Chloe's journey may not be over Happy day. quite yet <laughs> gonna be been, a day late this but... has been quite a saga this we've, we've it's like we've lost most of the second half of the day on this but we're nearly nearly there life can be really cruel sometimes um after having the seeds of hope rekindled by uh, the idea that Arnold might have had a spare tube that we could have then put in. Um, we had to wait around for a while for him to find it. And then unfortunately the tube that he had uh, was the wrong valve size for Chloe's bike. So it just wouldn't have worked. So uh, this means that Chloe has had to chuck his bike into um, Arnold's van and is now getting a lift uh, the rest of the way, the last 230 kilometers to Dead Horse. Um, and I'm gonna be cycling this bit the last kind of day and a half by myself, uh, which, ah, oh, it's just brutal. I feel so, I feel so gutted for Chloe to have come this far through all the hardest sections and now just to be looking at basically the home straight, you know, downhill and then flat and then just the last little bit and then to have that snatched away, ah, oh, it's brutal. So yeah, I feel very, feel very sad for him. Um, yeah, that's brutal. It's already about 5 p.m. and uh, I've got another 100 kilometers to cycle today if I'm gonna get there by tomorrow afternoon. 
so I have got to crack on. I have a really long way to go. Ciao, buen viaje. As I pedalled ever further north, the landscapes really started to open up as I completed the descent down from the Brooks Range and out towards the North Slope, a vast area of open country which makes up the northernmost slice of Alaska. I was now deep into the Arctic Circle. The nearest real tree was more than 200 kilometers away, far to the south, and there was nothing now but the endless grasslands, the rivers, the ponds, and the road. Okay, so this is pretty amazing. It is just after midnight. As you can see, the sun is still shining. We've got midnight sun tonight here in the Arctic. And I'm still on the road. I'm now only about 100 kilometers away from Dead Horse. I've got about 100 miles, 160 kilometers on the clock for today. Feeling amazing and I'm so happy to be here. All right, so got some good distance done. Got uh, an absolute cloud of mosquitoes joining me. Ah, there's one in the eye. Ow. I think I just killed an eye. I think I just killed a mosquito with my eye there. Um, but anyway, yeah, pretty happy to be, uh, to be done cycling. Beautiful sunset, not beautiful mosquitoes. But uh, yeah, only another, I think 90 kilometers to Dead Horse. So I'll have that done tomorrow. All right, so last 80 kilometers. I've got a pretty nasty headwind, so it's gonna be a long ride, but 80 kilometers to the finish. The last day was a battle, with some of the worst headwinds I've encountered in years. But part of me wasn't sorry that the Dalton Highway wasn't going to let me finish without a fight. The landscape was endless, stretching off almost perfectly flat as far as the eye could see in every direction, and travelling as slowly as I was, into the wind, I felt a bit like an ant, inching my way along a road that never seemed to change. I started seeing a bit more wildlife, with plenty of moose and caribou roaming the grasslands. We'd been surprised at how little wildlife we'd seen along the Dalton, and in Alaska in general, but with how bad the mosquitoes were that year, Perhaps they were all just in hiding. We didn't see a single bear on the entire Dalton, although perhaps that's not such a bad thing. Oh, okay, so I can finally see it. So I can see Dead Horse on the horizon. The headwind has been absolutely brutal today. It's just been such a grind, but 10 kilometers to go. 